Coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we're hooked up to a giant peacock bass in the heart of Brazil. Ecolodge de Bar, stay tuned. This jungle fishing adventure starts right now. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Eco Lodge de Barra, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Umpqua Feather Merchants, Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy. Welcome to the Amazon, a rainforest jungle that covers 55 million square kilometers or 21 million square miles and is peppered with countless winding rivers, lakes, and streams. It's a wild world under the canopy of the Amazon jungle and its waters are no different. Freshwater creatures have had to adapt to a life of eat or be eaten. I have an opportunity to experience the deep Amazon firsthand. In the heart of South America, a two-hour jet flight from Manaus, Brazil, floats Eco Lodge de Barra, the only floating lodge in what is one of the most inaccessible areas of the Amazon. Until now. The lodge sits at the confluence of two big rivers of the Amazon basin, the Rio Jurena and the Telas Perez. This is the ideal location for anglers to target fish in literally hundreds of lakes, ponds, streams, and bays. Roberto Veras, a lifelong adventure traveler and angler, has brought sustainability to a new level in ecotourism. Employing villagers from the nearby Bar de São Manuel community, everyone has a vested interest in sustainability and responsibility to this incredible fishery. And the fly fishing opportunities are excellent with many species of weird and wonderful fish to catch on fly. And some of them get huge. On this trip, we're hunting peacock bass. Joining me is the lodge's head guide, Thiago Carano. And things start off with a definite gift for any fly angler. You know, whenever you fish a new body of water, be it in your home country or a country far away like we are here in Brazil, it always helps to do the old cliche called matching the hatch. We were fortunate enough to find a piau, which is a bait fish that these peacock bass, arowana, and payara will be feeding on. Now, luckily, in our fly box, we happen to have flies that not only match the size profile, but also match the color scheme with the big eye, white body, and a black top. So we're going to put these to use and see if we can put some of these giant peacock bass in the net. I love it when Mother Nature gives you these kind of clues. It's absolutely perfect. Tiago, how far down should I be? Down? Yeah, how deep? Yeah, it's... Uh... I think so, a few moments uh, for sinking, uh, 10 seconds. And the more important is to trip this. Jerky. Short. Strong and short. Yes. A little bit slow. Yes. There they are. Have big ones? Yes. I think so. 
And I hope so. <laughs> okay, yes. Good. Double header, big peacocks. And there's a bunch of them over there too. Wow. Oh, oh. yeah. Big one. What a fishery. Tell you what, I am sure glad I've got a nine weight rod here. I need every bit of it with these big peacocks. Fly just pops out. Sight casting peacock bass at Icolage de Barra in Brazil. Just perfect. Uh, take the, the net. Oh, congratulations. Big Let's one. get him in the net. Okay. Oh, he's staring you down, buddy. Keep cool, buddy. Yes, man. Big one. Oh, oh. Big, big fish. That's got to be 12, 13 pounds all day. Congratulations. Thank what you, What a Mark. big, big peacock. And the double. Double header, too, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Good job. Okay, we're gonna get some pictures of this guy. Yes. And then we're gonna let him go. be fishing around the globe. So I collect the best things that all the lodges around the globe have been, has, and gathered together. So I think it's, it's okay. Three big heavers and 200 lakes. So many spots to fly fishing. And for me, the better place uh, in Brazil. We are trying to call it jungle fishing because of so many different spots and so many, so many different species of fish. Uh, this is really different. I, I don't know so many places that has this diversity. We can catch um, uh, 12 species or more and uh, peacock bass, uh, payaras, two types bicuda. Uh, two types, uh, bricons, jacundas, uh, aruanas, and many others. If there's one thing I've learned fishing for peacock bass, be it giants or little guys like this, is that really, peacocks are just the same as largemouth and smallmouth. Actually, it's the perfect mix between the two. For those who love to fish both smallmouth bass and largemouth bass, peacock bass are the perfect blend of both species. Peacocks will behave in the same characteristics similar to smallmouth, in that they're very much a schooling fish and you're often able to slight cast to cruising groups as well as blind casting around typical smallmouth type structure, bottom composition changes, rock, sand transitions, etc. Fishing for peacocks is similar to fishing structure for largemouth too. A well-placed topwater popper or streamer relating to standing structure will almost certainly result in a blow up. One thing is for certain, peacock bass exhibit many of the same traits as largemouth and smallmouth. They are strong, acrobatic, and incredibly fun to catch. And here at the lodge, they are everywhere. There are numerous lakes, streams, and ponds accessible to the lodge, and getting there is half the fun. We decide to hit one of the smaller ponds in search of big peacock bass. Though the outside temperature is quite high, 
in the low to mid 90s, Diago tells me we are actually experiencing a cold front. And with any cold front, the key is to slow everything down. We hike into pond number one and get ready to target big peacocks. There's no doubt that it pays a lot of value to spend some time at a schoolyard or something practicing your casting before you come down to a spot like this because the casting is often precise. And I'm not talking inches, I'm talking within feet. But what's important to couple with that is that when you make your cast, your precision cast, you have to make sure that with your line hand that you don't simply let go of the line. What happens is that line spins around your rod, you have to spend some time untangling it, and then you're able to strip. Oftentimes with these fish, as soon as that fly lands, it's game on. So what you wanna do is make your cast, keep the fly line in your hand, and hook it over your fingers, just like that, so you're ready to retrieve, and just like that, I had a hit. Just like that. So effectively what you're doing by immediately putting that was a piranha. By immediately putting that fit your line over your fingers, if you look at it as a, from a spin casting point of view, you're effectively closing that bail so that you can start the retrieve of your line. So let me show you one more time. So you cast out, present your fly, close the bail, so that you're always tight with your fly so when that fish hits, all you need to do is that big strip strike. Now see how I've got my arms spread out in a triangle? When you catch a big fish and you have line management to worry about, it's always best to have your arms wide apart so that you can effectively keep that line from getting tangled anywhere. You know where your line is, it's effective line management. And it could be the difference between landing that trophy fish and having it bust off because your line's wrapped around your feet. Oh, it's a good fish, man. Oh, it's a big. Even these back landlocked lakes hold giants. It's unbelievable. And this thing hit like a freight train. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. What a fish to start the day. Oh, he just crushed it. What an animal, what a thrill. Giant peacock bass on a landlocked lake at Ecolodge de Barra. Perfect. And go for another one. That was like the fourth cast here too. It was perfect. There he goes. Now, as I said during the fight of that fish, it's vital that when that fish strikes and you do your strip set, remember it's not a trout set, it's a strip set, that you immediately feel that fish and bring your arms out to create a triangle between your excess line and your reel. That way you know where your line is as it's being fed to the reel and it doesn't get tangled up into your feet. You won't lose any fish if you do that method. Coming up, we find the school and light it up in Brazil. Welcome back to the new Fly Fisher Brazil. We're fishing a remote pond deep in the Amazon and though we're experiencing a cold front, the schools of peacock bass are playing along. Oh, maybe it is a big one. Oh! <laughs> Big one. It's a good one, yep. Yeah. 
Oh, when the big ones jump, it is so much fun. Oh, my arm. Not so big, but strong, eh? Yeah. He's still eight pounds. Oh, look at that. Just incredible. Like grabbing a tarpon. Oh, nice fish. Very nice fish. Strong fish. This fishery is absolutely incredible. I'm having so much fun right now. And that was like the fifth cast of the day. Two fish over eight pounds. It's amazing. Let me know when you need a hand. Thank you, Paul. The net? Yes. Please. Yes. Now tell me that about this lake and how you got your biggest one here. Uh, here in this lake, so for me, it's the best lake here. And uh, many uh, big ones. All parts in the lake, big ones. Every time. Did you catch your biggest fish here? Yes. I caught uh, seven kilos. Good, good one, the big one. Big one. Segura, segura. Espera, ah, não tem mais. Oh, that's a big fish, don't, man. Don't push much power right now. This is the big one, man. Take it easy, take it easy. We could see these two peacocks sitting on the surface. Yeah, when you speak, I see two. Well, I look at that. Yeah, yeah, I see him. He's caught in the bush. Okay, no, no, put too much power. We're gonna. El tali, o. Sidearm pressure is vital when trying to slow big fish down, and even more important if they get into the wood. It often stops them from getting further tangled. Come on, baby. I got him, I see him. <laughs> we gotta get him out of there though. Okay. He's there. He's there, man. You see him? Grab me the stick. Forward. Pra frente, pra frente. Your your hot for for down there. Okay. 
Okay. Okay? Yeah. You're going to talk about jungle fishing. Jungle fishing at its finest. He's still on too. And it's this scenario exactly as to why you invest in good quality leader material that can take a beating. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! That, yeah, my friend, is a game changer right there. <laughs> that is the biggest peacock I've ever seen. Woo! What a pig! What an absolute monster. Took me into the bush. My friend. Congratulations, my friend. We did Good it. Job. What a fish. Oh. What's important with these big peacocks is that you bring them into shore when you let them go. After a fight like that, especially after getting caught up in the trees, you gotta let these fish go so that they can swim to the shoreline and not be ravaged at all by piranha. Thanks, buddy. Thrill of a lifetime. Wow. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. I want to thank you for watching. You know, adventure is out there. All you have to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. For all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, I'm Mark Melnick, and hopefully we'll see you in the jungle. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Eco Lodge de Barra, Orvis Sporting Traditions. Scientific Anglers. Umpqua Feather Merchants. Superfly. Fly fishing made easy.